Tracy's going to sing on one too. Okay. So Which drop one? the black one. Uh, 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 okay. She wants to watch the TV. <laughs>
You don't get to choose what our God is and who He is. He is, and you either believe or you don't. And that's a hard conversation to have with your mother. And I was a baby believer and I was zealous, so everybody's going to hear about the Lord. <laughs> so we had many a lively conversation and discussion, but that was one that stuck out to me. And she was convinced I was part of a cult, you know, because I was changing. And she's like, oh my gosh, you know, you're, you're drinking the Kool-Aid. What's going on? <laughs> but she saw this change and she didn't understand <laughs> it. Because she knew me. She knew who I had been. And I was no longer that person and she couldn't reconcile. So she was convinced that the church was brainwashing me. Well, then I left the church and we started this church. She was even more confused. Because mm -hmm. now I'm going to hotels and going to the basement of these buildings and going to a trailer park. What? I thought, what? what is going on? But you know what? Before my mother died, she was baptized down here. Nathan mm -hmm. baptized her down here. And she called upon the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. She made a sacrifice. And she may have done it for me. She may have, I, I think part of her thought she was doing that for me as a gift for me. But that was a gift for herself. Yes, amen. Yeah. And she, I think, finally saw the joy that I had that she did because I'll tell you, if you do and do and do and do, and, and you see others reaping a reward, it leads to bitterness. Yeah. And that steals our joy. That's right. And so I don't want any of us to be deceived that we can have access to the priceless gifts of God without paying a price. It's not money. It's not good works. It's not being good. It's simply believing in Jesus Christ yeah. and laying ourselves down and receiving all that he is in his yeah. place. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, well, a lot, a lot of things. First of all, it, it's funny when you travel, you never realize how thankful you are for the church and the body of believers you have. I mean, both Pastor and Sally, plus, you know, you, Roberto, Jody, Tim, everybody that speaks from the pulpit is just so anointed. And, and, and I can't say I've ever gone to a service and not walked away with something, regardless of, of who's who's preacher or not. So just so thankful for the body that we Praise have here God. because you really you you really notice how dry it is other places when you're you're off traveling. So um, I had an awesome time in Cincinnati trying to do stuff for our business and we even we we always pray, you know, that we'll meet the right people and we'll get to be a blessing for people. And got to give this one lady a ride back to the airport because her ride fell through and it was just a horrible situation for her. Uh, but the circumstances, her and her husband have both been married 19 years, just like Jamie and I have. In fact, just a month apart, more or less. Just so many similar things. At, at the end of the ride, she was talking about teaching people uh, the Bible in Japan, and I thought it was great. Found out she's a Jehovah's Witness. That's fine. We're going we're gonna to deal with that, mm -hmm. you know, one step at a time, because I'm not exactly sure how they believe compared to us. I just know that they don't believe the same way we do, totally. So thankful for that. Um, need prayer though for um, a family that the couple that his his dad that we prayed for his salvation a couple weeks back. His dad's still alive, um, but he had married this lady that had, had kids before her husband had died, and one of her adopted sons took his life this last week. Mm -hmm. And just a just a very bad situation. He had been he and his wife had been going to this. They, for the most part, hadn't been in church, period. They had started going to a church, but they caused quite a bit of problems and basically were asked to leave. Or, you know, they I, we don't know the whole story. This guy's quite a liar. He was put in jail several months back uh, because he pulled a gun on a prostitute in Wisconsin. He's just, he's just as a person, not a nice person, but... You know, and I, I don't know honestly, only the Lord knows if there's, I mean, there's grace there, but whether he received it or not, it's yeah. just a huge thing. His mom's a wreck because she wouldn't let him get baptized in the church when he was young, young and wanted to be, and obviously her belief is, is because he wasn't baptized, he went to hell. Now's not the time to try to explain that to her or not. We just don't know where he was at, but I mean, he was just in a, not a good situation and I mean they his whole family just needs the Lord right now because I mean I I wouldn't want to be in that situation um, where in the natural there just doesn't look to be any hope for him he was I mean the guy was anything but a nice person but I mean it's still sad I mean he was wasn't he he's only like 23 
can I have that conversation with someone that I had judged for 11 years and, and avoided in my professional life for several years because I just had a bad first impression. I can't even tell you why. And had a conversation with him. He's a believer, and he is a powerful believer that has so much in common with that's crazy and could have 11 years of ministry together, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but what struck me that what he said the most was that there are, because he, he works a lot in the Catholic Church, but they have a travel ministry, and there's a lot of Catholic things. He stayed at the Pope's house twice, so... Um, and he said, you know, there's true believers, there's true converts in every single religion, right. every single church. He said, and if we can't get over what the denomination says over on the sign mm-hmm. or, or, or ask if it matters, you know, what are you, you know? He said, if we can't connect as believers, we have no power. That's right. You know, or we, we, we diminish our power. I shouldn't say we have no power. We diminish our power as a church that, and the authority that we have. So we have to, I think, first recognize each other, right? And that's what I've been talking about, discernment. I've been praying for discernment in my own life and for the church. And um, We have to be able to recognize each other, and we have to be able to recognize the enemy when he's at work. Mm-hmm. And we have to have those around us that we can find together. And it's going to be outside these walls where the most powerful relationships. I think those divine connections, the Lord is building divine connections all over Iowa in many different ways, and, and even outside of Iowa. But um, it happened. There was a conference um, at Heartland that Mike and I went two years ago, and that guy would tell, he said he was a, a bridge builder. I thought it was odd, you know, his spiritual gift was bridge building. But he meant connecting people, connecting groups. And it's always stuck with me that I think ever since then I've been more aware of those bridges being built and those connections being made. And that's how the church is going to be one. Mm-hmm. We have to be one. And then there's a very powerful thing happening in this church, uh, and I'm not saying that to on my horn, but, uh, oh, that's okay. you know, the way this worship team operates, uh, and how all our hearts are open to what's happening, I mean, the fact that we can have an entire hour and a half house prayer session in which we play music, improvising, I had never done that in my entire life. If you tell me that that's not a God, I don't know what it is. Because I cannot replicate that on my own. The Holy Spirit gets a hold of us, and our instruments start playing <laughs> notes that we don't know where they're coming from, words are coming out of our mouths, and then it's funny because as soon as we're done, it's like, huh, I wonder what we're singing and what we're playing. Sometimes, I, yes. I mean, it's not like I purposely forget. But, Good thing we recorded that. <laughs> yeah. And, and in the Bible, it, it says that the decisions went out first, you know, and and that's what we're doing. And that's why I love every time that I pray, I can't have my prayer, they do the prayer for I'm going to go there. Because we continue to put those blocks or, that continue to enhance and make that prayer even stronger. And if other churches from this region would join, can you imagine what's going to happen? The, the walls are going to shake. Yeah. And that's what I'm waiting for. More people to come. So, to put it, can you put it to an external microphone? Yeah, you know, uh, <clears throat> go anywhere. Just like what you were saying earlier about prejudging and kind of. Sorry, now. Then we're discerning and we're actually just judging, <laughs> judging and suspicious. Yeah. But scripture says that that we should all come together in the unity of the faith. Yes. Not the doctrine. I mean, the doctrine is the thing that, just like that, we're focusing on something that is not really spiritual. So I'm not saying we're against doctrine, but doctrine doesn't save anybody. It's faith that saves. And it's faith that binds us and bonds us together as believers, not, you know, not our particular individual doctrines. I've got cousins that... Uh, or the charismatic movement within the Catholic Church. I've known, I mean, Catholics all my life, so I know many of them that are believers in Christ. Now, they still go through the rituals, and they still have the, you know, the the dogma and so forth that the church has established. But they're real, what's saving them is not that. That's just a kind of a comforting aspect of their traditions, mm-hmm. but it's their faith in Christ and saying this is true for everybody. I mean, even Jehovah Witnesses, I can remember used to come when, when we lived in the city or when we lived in town, and they were always knocking on the door. And so I did a little bit of study just to see who I was dealing with, you know. And they have some very kind of like the uh, 
Who is it? Mormons? Mormons, yeah. Similar, I mean, similar in the sense that they've got a really kind of strange way of looking at things. But they still believe in Jesus. Now, if their emphasis is on the ritual and the dogma and the doctrine, well, then there's a question of who's saved anyway, regardless of what church you're going to. But if they believe in Christ as their Savior, they have, they have the same commonality when it comes to our relationship with the Lord as that any believer has. So it's just too easy, it's just too easy to hear Baptists, you know, Methodists, Episcopalian, Lutheran, and automatically go, well, bless their heart, you know. Mm -hmm. But we don't know. Yeah. We have to see. And, and to Peter's point, you know, the guy, the guy that did this, I mean, how many, how many of us, now, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, we've robbed somebody or, you know, a prostitute. I don't know how that, is that a good, bad, or a bad thing? Yeah. I'm not sure how that works. But nevertheless, the point is, the guy that was crucified with Jesus, mm -hmm. he must have been a bad guy. I mean, he wasn't. Jesus was the one that was up there innocent. Everybody else was guilty. I mean, they were they were being punished for a crime of some sort or another. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it says that they were thieves and robbers or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the guy was a bad guy, you know, as a human being. But God's grace. Jesus said, you'll be with me in paradise today. You know, yeah. I'll be with you. So you can never second guess the Lord. Yeah. You know, and as to Peter's point, now it's all about the people that are behind. This guy's eternity has been established. Yeah. So we can just believe that he's in the hands of a loving God and try to reach out to his family and help them to see that, that same grace. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard for people that are outside the church to see it because all they've heard is the yes. religious aspect mm -hmm. of, of our Savior. And then if they're in the church, the truth is a huge percentage of the church Oh, yeah. the same way. Yeah. They're seeing it still as what I've got to do and what I haven't done. That's true. I made that mistake and so, you know, I've got some bad stuff coming. If I don't get it in this life, I guess I just won't get it at all. Or I won't get it to heaven. So, yeah, it's insane. We have to, we've got to realize and so, it's not our job to see who's saved or who isn't saved. Yeah. I mean, to determine that. We're going to lead people to the Lord. So anybody that we meet, if they're a believer, I just treat them as, as if they're safe, you know, as if they have the same situation that I have. And, mm -hmm. What do I got to lose by doing that? You know, that's what the scripture says that uh, who condemns? Jesus is the one that died for you. I mean, he's the one that paid the price, and if he's not condemning, then why in the world would, would I? Amen. You used to be so freaked out about being nice to somebody who wasn't one of us. No. You know what I'm talking about in the holiness church and that, because it, it might give them the impression that uh, it's okay you know, that they can get away with something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What is not us that judges in the first place? Why not just love them? And when you see Jesus, that's all He was doing. And He was loving the people that didn't go to church. Yes, exactly. Oh, think the homosexuals yeah. that are being alienated yeah. from the Lord and may feel like because of their lifestyle, yeah. there's no approaching yeah. God whatsoever. Well, the Bible doesn't talk a lot about that under the New Covenant. But listen, it's listed. The thieves and liars and murderers are listed right there with gossips. I've got to believe that can't be too big for God to love the past. I'm not saying we're embracing it any more than we would embrace somebody who murder somebody. But there's a spirit there that God paid the price for them to be saved, for them to be born again. Yeah. So I you know rather than worrying about what are people going to think that are they thinking that hey I'm I'm in agreement with this lifestyle or can I just love the person and let God deal with the lifestyle. Absolutely. Just like he has to with all of us. Exactly. Now, exactly. It may not be that same thing. Well, we all got issues. You know, Jesus said, if you look on somebody, if you think this, if you feel that, you're guilty as if you had done it. So, I think it's just where we're at, where the church, where the Lord is trying to take us to is a place where we can just love people, period. I let. Yeah. I mean, that's what, they, that's what these people, hey, 
there's always going to be hatred, especially when it comes to politics. <laughs> Donald Trump, Barack Obama, you know what I mean? Name somebody. It doesn't matter. They're not our standard. We can have preferences and be thinking that, well, maybe this guy will move more in the direction of my you know, convictions and so forth. But the bottom line is, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain to build it. If, if we're not focused on the Lord, these people are all going to have shortcomings because they're people. Right? And we get disappointed because we get promises and they get in and they're not able to keep the promises and we're mad at the person. The person, that they're doing what anybody would do in that position. So just keep the focus on the Lord. Pray for them. Pray for our leaders. Pray for those in positions of authority and power. And just let the Lord sort the whole thing out. You know, Peter told us that we're only to see the Jesus Christ in each other. Right? And so if we're looking for the Jesus in everybody, we don't see all the other stuff. That's and right. if we're talking to the Jesus in them, then the other stuff matters. Because that's, that's the one thing that binds us all together. And so free. We're never going to be doctrine. <laughs> never going to be agreeing on every detail of the faith. But there's one thing, and his name is Jesus. And that's it's so, Jesus or it's not. It's so free. For us, or for anybody, for that matter, to not feel like you're carrying the load of whether this person's saved or not saved, mm -hmm. going to be saved. Mm -hmm. Love, just let the love of yeah. God go and trust them. Yeah. Oh, um, so uh, a couple other things. Um, we need prayer. We need grace because we're homeschooling Jacob for the first time ever. Um, also, just um, I. So I, I'm going to brag on you for a second. So I, I try to listen to, if I don't have a lot of conference calls during the day, try to listen to, like, a uh, teacher. And Bill Johnson was listening to him one day last week, or two weeks ago, I guess it was. And he said, you don't need to have, you know, 100 people praying for you. You just need the one person praying for you that has faith to believe for what you want. Mm -hmm. And so um, pastor was gone, and I'm just like, Lord, who is that? Lord says, Suzanne. I said, okay. So I made it to church and had Suzanne and Michael pray for me. And what was kind of funny is Tom Stamen, I didn't even know he was in the area, texted me and said, hey, are you coming to see me in ACAS? I said, I didn't know. I, I guess I would. And a lot of the things that Tom said over me as he prayed were things that Suzanne had said over me. So I, I know I need some direction personally for my life. I don't know if I'm supposed to stay in my current job. I don't know if I'm supposed to... I know the job I'm in is the job I'm supposed to be in for, for the moment. Um, took quite a huge pay cut last year, still struggling from that. I don't know if I'm supposed to get a different job at Wells Fargo, if I'm supposed to go beyond Wells Fargo. I need, I've got to have a job, and I also don't know, like with what Dave Ramsey teaches, if I need to get a second job to help pay down some of these debts that we've incurred and, and things that have happened. So, I mean... Um, I need direction for what I'm supposed to do because right right now, if I keep this current job, I've got it. It looks like I'm going to have to get a second job. I just, you know, we've got two vehicles that are 15 years old and they need repairs and amongst other things. So I just, I need direction. Clear, clearly know what to do. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, Lord, that you were sent from the very beginning, Lord. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you came and you finished the work. You came and you finished it, Lord. You made a way for every need to be met, Lord. You made a way for us to just simply receive the grace that lets us live a life free from the bondage of this world. A life free from the bondage of death, hell, and grave. A life free from sickness and poverty and disease. A life free from effort. Lord, if we could just rest in the finished work of the cross and put our hope and our trust in you, Lord. Right now, I just pray for us to have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, Lord. As we stand in these forks in the road, Lord, and we know that a choice needs to be made and we don't know the direction to go. I pray for clarity for your church, Lord, every single person, Lord, as we come to those points of decision, those points where you have to choose to the right or to the left, Lord, that you make it clear, Lord, that you make it clear in your peace, your peace, your peace will calm the storms that try to distract us from hearing the still small voice that leads us and guides us. We speak peace to the storms that have raged in your people's lives, Lord. Right now we pray.
pray a blessing, Lord, over those in Texas who are suffering, Lord, from this hurricane. We ask that your grace abound, Lord, that where sin does appear, that grace does much more abound. Lord, and that you would rise up the true believers to connect and work together to be a blessing, that the church was created to be a blessing. Jesus.
And uh, if you have anywhere you want to put up the flyers, I made whole one-page flyers that we can just take and stick up. So yeah. let's spread the word. Amen. Amen. All right, offering. Ron, you want to come take an offering tonight for us? Please and thank you.
I think it was Michelangelo's painting where the guy was having his hand out like that, and the finger of God was coming down and they were touching. The Lord, the Lord is showing that our spirit needs to be in that place, that our spirit touches His spirit. I know the kingdom is within us. And just as in that painting, the spirit, our spirit was touching out his kingdom that was within us, was touching heaven's kingdom. And I don't know, it's just like when you take um, the two electrodes when you're arc welding, stick welding, when you bring them together, something's happening. When the kingdom of God is in this room, and the kingdom of God is within us. And what I see coming now in this place is when people are being prayed for by those who have the kingdom within them and those around them with the kingdom and this room being full, fully charged of the Holy Ghost, that it's going to affect, it's going to weld on yeah. those people's needs. In the natural, our bodies are made of water, and it's a high conductor. That's why so many people get electrocuted so easily. You become the ground. But I believe in this place, there's going to be Holy Ghost electrocutions done in this place. Okay? All right? You're going to get 443 phased. So you know what I'm talking about. Okay? Yeah, okay. Hopefully that's good. It is. I feel it. <laughs> you have no choice but to feel it. It may manifest in your in your flesh, whatever, but it's the spirit. The Lord, we give you glory in advance right now. The word I keep hearing is collide. Collide. When heaven and earth collides. When the kingdom within us collides with the kingdom of God without. When that collision occurs. Like the lighting of atoms? That's exactly what I was saying. I was saying where they make that bomb. When they take that little molecule, that electron, I believe, and they send it, and then it smashes at a high velocity, and it creates this whole new thing. It creates a new realm. The new thing exists before. <laughs> In a movie, they called it the God's, the God's version. It's on. We need that. We need that over this neighborhood. We need that over this city. We need that over this state. We need that over this country. We need that over. We love that. Yes, Lord. We reach out to you for this. Yes, Lord. We want that. We want. The world has never seen, but a cloud of glory, the cloud of your glory, Lord, that radiates and transforms and changes.
brought before you this evening. We trust you, Lord. For every good and perfect gift comes from you. Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Lord, we know that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Anything you've ever done, hallelujah, is still being manifest in our lives today. And we thank you for it. Nothing is impossible if we can believe. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. Everybody said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you, Mike, and the worship team. Thank you, Harry, for doing a great job Sunday. We need to stand in hand for Mike. The worship team all did a great job. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. That's the way it ought to be. We ought to have, just like when I'm gone, somebody steps in and takes over. That's the way it ought to be. Praise the Lord. The one common denominator about it all is Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. He's the one doing the work. Praise God. Whew. Well, thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Praise God. Are we ready? Hallelujah. Psalms 19, Mike. Psalms 19, uh, verse 8 through 11. Psalms 19, 8 through 11. Praise God. You know, here's here's kind of my way of thinking. Now, I, I I love manifestation. I love to see the power of God move. Obviously, in my life and in the lives of other people, and I have, thank the Lord, and most all of us have. But I think sometimes, because we are flesh, because we are human, we have a tendency to put more emphasis on the sensory realm. Right. Than we do the spirit, and sometimes we confuse the two. We think that because there's something we're feeling and you know manifesting, that uh, that that's more powerful. But if I look, if you look at Jesus, at the life that he led here on earth, obviously there were manifestations happening all the time. Mm -hmm. But he was a teacher. Amen. Yeah. Ninety percent of what he did was teaching. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, and I'm not saying that for my benefit because I just do what I do and you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> uh, treaching. But uh, we're teaching all the time. And that's what I see Jesus doing teaching, teaching. And, uh, and that was how he preached. And why? Because there is such power in this. Now, we've overlooked this, I think, in my mind. The church has, has missed this. And we look for the demonstration, right. not realizing that the demonstration comes from the God. If thou canst believe. Yes. So that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. I'm not against any of the rest of it. Don't misunderstand me. I'm all for manifestation. I, I love to preach out and see the, those manifestations, same as everybody. But I'm just saying how they actually come about, how they are produced. Amen? So, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing to the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. You say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're talking about the Word of God. Amen. Amen. All right. First Samuel chapter three, verse twenty-one. First Samuel three, verse twenty-one. Praise God. The Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed Himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. I want you to look at this. The way this is is written. The Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed Himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word 
of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we need to think about that rather than just read it, praise the Lord. Yep. Seriously. God reveals Himself mainly by His Word. Yes, yes Lord. Praise the Lord. Just like it was in the days of Samuel, so it is today. Mm. Amen. Amen. The Lord appeared, it says, at Shiloh and revealed Himself to Samuel by the Word of the Lord. Yes. When it says the Lord appeared, it's actually saying something amazing. God wasn't seen with the eyes of the head, but with the eyes of the heart. Yes. Mm. As the Word was heard, the Lord was seen. Yes. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Mm. In the hearing was the seeing. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. The spiritual hearing of God's word yes. becomes the spiritual seeing yes. of God's glory. There you go. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, you say, oh, but that was the Old Testament. No. Come Look on. Second Corinthians chapter four and verse four. Second Corinthians four and four. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Mm. That's revelation. Mm. Praise the Lord. Come on. This is what Roberto was talking about. It's also what Suzanne was talking about. And whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Yeah. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, yes. should shine unto them. So, you see, the light of the glory of Christ. Mm. In the hearing is the seeing. Yes. Mm. Praise God. The Lord opens the eyes of the heart to see the glory of Christ in the Word. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Matthew 16, verse 17. Matthew 16 and 17. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon and Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you, or unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Who did yes. he say that I am? He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, Blessed, Simon, because flesh and blood, or intellect, didn't reveal it to you, right. but right. my Father, who is a spirit, yeah. invisible, has revealed this to you. Amen. Amen. So we need the Word of God, not only to see God in the Word, but to really see Him correctly anywhere. Yeah. And He's everywhere. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yes. All right, John 16, verses 13 and 14. John 16, verses 13 and 14. I'm telling you, we have something so powerful right here. Yes. Come on. Something so significant. Amen? Amen. Mm. I'm holding a revelation of Jesus Christ right here in my hand. Amen. Come on. Yes. A visible, tangible reality of God. Yes. Yeah. Ooh, praise the Lord. Ooh, I'm telling you. Come on. Albeit when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all the truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. We're talking about the Holy Spirit now. Spirit of Christ, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. Yes. Praise God. If the Spirit brought us to faith, no man comes to the Lord except the Spirit of God, right? Mm -hmm. So if the Spirit brought us to faith without the revealing of Jesus in His Word, our faith wouldn't be in Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? I mean, right. you hear what I'm saying? If, if, if the Holy Spirit drew us to faith without revealing Jesus, our faith would be in something other than Jesus. Now let me tell you something. That's why we have all these different denominations. Uh-huh. Because many people's faith is in their doctrinal creed or their, their theology more than it is in the person of Jesus Christ. They've turned this into a, a textbook instead of a revelation of Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. Praise right. the Lord. This is the living Word of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So, the Spirit binds His faith. Now, here's, here's what happens. He, the Holy Ghost binds His faith awakening ministry to the Christ exalting Word of God. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Yep. You can't come to Jesus without the Word. 
So the Holy Spirit binds His faith awakening uh, ministry, which is what the Holy Ghost does. He draws us, but He connects it to the Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. John 3, verses 6 through 8. John 3, 6 through 8. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but can't not tell where it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So, and I can't tell you how many times and I've been reading the Scripture and felt the presence of God. Just awakened yes. to the reality of God. Yes. It's because you can't separate. Right. Now the Holy Spirit says that He's like the it's like the wind that blows where it, where it wants to. <laughs> and you hear the sound there, but you can't yeah. tell where it's coming from. You can't tell where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Mm. So that I'm, I say the Spirit of God produces both a subconscious influence and a conscious experience of the power and personal relationship that comes as a result of that very faith. Amen. Are you with me? Yep. So there's a conscious, there's a subconscious thing that happens which draws us to God, and then there's a conscious thing that we through which we experience the power, amen, uh, the, the, the personal revelation, if you will, of Jesus. Yep. And that explains two things to me. First of all, this is why the Bible can speak of the Spirit glowing where He wills <laughs> and affects our lives before yeah. we were able to even choose. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But we're drawn. Subconsciously. I mean, we're not, I don't know about you, but most of us, you know, we say things like, well, I found Jesus. We didn't find Jesus. I mean, He found us. He drew us to Him. Amen? But it's, sub, it's, it's the subconscious through which He's working. So, in other words, by His unconscious influence, He works in us to enable us to hear and accept the Word of God. Amen. Wow. That's good. Man, I feel that. Come on. We, you know, we can't take credit for any of this. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit draws us, subconsciously draws us to Him, and then awakens us consciously to the Word, to the reality, so that we can accept it. Praise God. Amen. Now, number two, it's also why the Bible says the Spirit comes through our hearing of the Word. Amen? In other words, conscious awareness of the Spirit and the leading of the Spirit is given when you hear the Word of God with faith. He draws us, and then we become consciously aware of God through the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Look, if He didn't impart faith to us, we could never believe to be saved. Right? Praise the Lord. Alright, look. The leading of the Spirit is given when we hear the Word of God with faith. Alright, Galatians 3 and 5. What He says. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the words of the law or by the hearing of faith? Wow. By the hearing with faith. That's why anybody can read this, but if the Holy Spirit hasn't drawn them, it's just words. That's why it's so baffling to us that as believers, and we, we they read the same scripture and we go. Don't you get it? <laughs> and they're going, no, 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 I don't understand any of it. It just doesn't make 
make any sense. And I admit, sometimes it can be a little difficult to understand. But not if you are drawn by the Spirit. He'll give you enough revelation so that you'll have faith. Amen? Now, just notice the word you're hearing. It, it implies that words have been spoken. Right? Right. Now, Paul preached the Word of God. And now here, he's, he's reminding these people in, in, in Galatia that hearing that Word with faith was the means by which the Spirit was given to you. So the Spirit draws you, the Word is anointed, and it's through that Word that He is able to come to you. Yes. To be in you, to be a part of you. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. So the Spirit comes unconsciously before we trust in Him. And so He enables us to believe in God's Word, and then the Spirit comes consciously. Mm -hmm. Maybe God's pretty bright. <laughs> right? Because we're not intellectually, or, or I should say we're not spiritually able to accept the intellectual reality. Mm -hmm. So He has to come to us first to set us up so that we have faith then to believe when we hear the Word. Mm -hmm. It's power. God is so brilliant. Amen. And yet it's so simple if we don't confuse it with human intellect. Exactly. exactly. So, that enables us to believe in God's Word and then the Spirit comes consciously in response to our trusting Him and He gives us a conscious experience of His reality in us through the Word of God. Yes. <laughs> God. Oh, man, does it that way. I can't think of a better way to do it. Praise the Lord. That's the experience that Paul calls the joy of the Holy Ghost. There you go. Yes. Amen. Look at look at First uh, Thessalonians chapter one verse six. We can't take credit for this. I mean, that's the thing. It's all about Him. He gives us the faith to believe this word, and He does it before we are consciously able to reject it. He draws us. But people don't know why. You know, I just thought I had to go to church. You know? Just thought I had to read the Bible. The Holy Spirit. So, ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the Word in much affliction and with the joy of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. So, if you want more of the Spirit of God, how many of you want more of the Spirit? Come on. Hey Amen. That's what we're always after. I mean, that's what we're doing all the time, right? We want more. We want to be overflowing. We want to experience the the just the overwhelming presence, right? Amen. Yeah. Well, if you want more of the Spirit of God, you have to hear more of the Word of God with faith. That's what all this is telling us, right? Praise the Lord. You want more of the Spirit? Get in this thing, man. It's, that's what it's for. Uh -huh. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 5, uh, verses 18 and 19. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Now I've heard that preached, and it was always because it was always about somebody drinking. That's not what it's about. Right. He's just using that as a metaphor, as a as a, something to get your attention. This is about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on. He's talking about how, the change that takes place when a person's drunk, as opposed to being sober. Right. Mm -hmm. Or being filled with the Holy Spirit as opposed to just having experienced yeah. an encounter or what have you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. To the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. And here the here's what he's saying. Hear the promises. See their certainty. Value them. Bank on them. And that's the way God supplies more of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Come on. Get it. Find your promise. Believe it. Stand on it. Bang on it. Make it a certainty. Yep. And 
you'll experience more of the Holy Spirit. Glory. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's how He works. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, not only does the, uh, the act of faith come by hearing, but all subsequent acts of faith mm -hmm. come by hearing. Amen. You don't just get it and then you just go off into your thing. <laughs> right. The initial, if the initial act of faith came by hearing, every subsequent act of faith comes by hearing as well. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. God supplies His Spirit through this hearing with faith. Amen. You can't receive the Holy Spirit if you don't have faith in what the Word says about it. Mm -hmm. Right. You can't receive anything. Healing, deliverance, come on, breakthrough, prosperity, revelation. Any, you can't get any of that without hearing with faith. Right. The fullness of the Spirit comes by the ongoing hearing of the Word of God. Amen. You know why when you know when Suzanne or, or uh, Roberto or Tim or anybody, whoever, even sometimes uh, in a testimony when we're speaking of in relation to the Word of God, we get excited, right? Yeah. Yep. We get worked up. Come on. Faith rises. Yes. This what yes. we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. yep. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is feeding us, amen, this truth. Thank you, Jesus. And we're hearing it, and the Holy Spirit is growing. Uh -huh. The Holy Spirit is filling us, overflowing us by faith. And we go out and we think, I got it! But we're not hearing the Word consistently. Right. So within a day or two, that's why Peter was talking about, I needed to hear something. Why? He wants to be full of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Because only when we're full of the Holy Spirit can we be led right. by the Holy Spirit. Right. Praise the Lord. So it's innate. I mean, it's in us to, to, to want that. And it's available all the time. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. John chapter 6, verse 63. Why was Jesus filled with the Spirit? Because He was the Word of God. Mm -hmm. He never said anything that His Father didn't say. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You want to know the difference? That's the difference. He spoke the Word. He thought the Word. He lived the Word. It was always a question of greater and greater faith. He's hearing by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So it is the Spirit that quickened. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit and they are life. Praise Praise God. God. Amen. John chapter 20, verse 31. These are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. Amen. Praise God. Matthew 4, verse 4. Jesus answered and said, It is written, and he's speaking to the devil who's tempting him to, believe, to, to question his relationship to God. If you're the Son of God. You know? And Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. So the life that we get, and this is just another way of him saying it, the life that we get from bread is fragile. Uh -huh. It's limited. It's temporary. Amen? It's short. Mm -hmm. But look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 through 25. 1 Peter 1, 23 through 25. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, 
All the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, the flower thereof fadeth away, falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the Gospels is preached unto you. Mm -hmm. Praise God. The life we get from the Word is firm, it's blessing. eternal, yes. and it's created and kept by the Word of God. Amen. 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 You get away from the Word for a month or two. Amen. Don't go to church. Don't hear any preaching. Don't, don't listen to any preaching. Don't read the Bible. And I'll tell you what, you'll feel flat mm -hmm. and empty mm -hmm. and alienated. Right. But one little trip back to the Word of God, yeah. and all of a sudden, mm. everything's like an alligator. Come on. Because faith comes by hearing. Yep. Amen. So, it's created and it's kept by the Word of God. And with that life, that life that he's talking about, that Jesus gave us, right? I've come to give you life and that more abundantly yes. fulfilled life, life of faith, that life comes, with that life comes the light of life. Amen. By which we see the glory of Christ. Amen. That's the difference between a believer and a non-believer. We have all the same information, but the difference is we believe, and that is a light. That is a revelation of Jesus. Amen. He's God. He's not, it's not just words on a page. It is a revelation of our God. Hallelujah. Glory. Psalms 36, verse 9. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He is the revelation of all revelation. Without a revelation of Jesus, what did God say? First thing I need is for you to believe that I am. And that I'm a good God. That mm -hmm. I'm a rewarder of them that seek me. Yeah. That's what he's saying here. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light, I get light. In your reality, I get revelation. In my connection to you, I get greater revelation of you. Come on. Praise the Lord. The Word brings us from darkness, from, from gloom, from the kingdom of darkness, right? Right. To the light of the glory of Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's how it works. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 24 through 26. 2 Timothy 2, 24 through 26. Servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure would give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. Praise the Lord. Teaching is what God uses to deliver us from the snare of the devil. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Teaching what? The knowledge of the truth. The Word of God. Mm -hmm. So if you want power over the devil, how many of you want power over the devil? Amen. Oh, Amen. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. If you want to escape the snare yes. of his lies and the destruction of your faith, then do what Jesus did. And you are the Word of God as a sword. That's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Get it in your mouth. Uh, and speak. Yes. Mm -hmm. Release it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. Because not only does that release you from the snare of the devil, it builds your faith. It fills you with the Holy Spirit. Mm. Praise the Lord. I just gave you the Scriptures for it. Yep. Mm -hmm. You want more of the Holy Ghost? Yes. Get more of the Word of God. I don't care how you get it. You can listen to it. You can watch it. You can read it. You can meditate on it. Whatever you do, you're being filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. So, I'll, let me just close with this. Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 3.
This is how John on the Isle of Patmos, cut off from everybody, no church services, no CDs, <laughs> and no, no, no anything except the word that he had received from Jesus. Yes. And what a revelation he had. Yep. I was on the Lord's day full of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And then he just begins to speak. Yep. Revelation. Yes. I thought the revelation. Yes. I thought the revelation. Woo. The Holy Spirit just feeding him, filling him. More, more Lord. More and more. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, or standeth in the way of the sinners, or sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in, this, in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Come on. Praise the Lord. Keep this word in you. Keep it before you. Keep it in you. Yes. And the Holy Spirit will grow faith in you that can move mountains. Amen that will bring to pass mm -hmm. all the desires of your heart. That's what God's intention is. That's why He's given us His Word. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. This is so powerful, church. We talk about an atom bomb. Yeah. This thing is destroying the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. And establishing the kingdom of light. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. yes. Praise the Lord. Praise He's the Lord. bringing people from death uh, to life. Yes. From ignorance to joy. Yes. yes. From weakness. Let the weak say I'm strong. Yes. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Let the poor say I'm, I'm rich. rich. Yes. Praise God. How do we do it? By faith. Uh -huh. By the Word of God. Whoa. That becomes reality. Yeah. Listen, don't ever underestimate the presence of the Holy Spirit in your yes. life. Yes. He's there all the time. Uh -huh. And He's always trying to give more faith to you. Why? Because He grows by that faith. Amen. His, his impact, not only in your life, but in the lives of everybody you interact with, there you go. comes through faith. Mm -hmm. As your faith grows, you're being filled more and more and more by the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's why we just stand here, just like Roberto did here this evening, and begin to share something with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit quickly. Mm -hmm. And as you're sharing it, what happens? Woo! Your faith rises and you're almost freaked out by the very thing you're saying. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like somebody else ought to be saying that. Right? Mm -hmm. That's, That's how the Holy Spirit works. It's Christ in you. The hope of glory. Yes. yes. The Word of God is settled forever. Amen. It's our job to settle it down here. Mm -hmm. First with myself, once that happens, I can believe for anything. I can believe for everybody or anybody. Praise the Lord. That's this amazing. thing is supernatural. Amen. It's the most powerful thing on the planet. Right here. Amen. Okay. It is God between pages. Amen. All we got to do is open it up to let Him out. Let Him out. To release that power and that anointing. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Just meditate on it. Just think on these things. When the enemy comes, and that's what he does, he comes to steal the word. Why? Because that's where your faith is. Mm -hmm. yep. If you steal the word, he'll have you crippled, he'll have you doubting, he'll have you in fear, he'll have you, yes. uh, you know, on your knees pleading and begging for something that already belongs to you. Come on. But you can believe. Believe what? Believe the truth of the word of God. Yes, Nothing shall be impossible. Yes. Amen. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah. It'd be a good reason mm. to get some of this in you. Come on. Every day. There you go. However that happens, it doesn't matter how you do it. Just do it. Just get do it in there. Keep it in there. Keep that Holy Spirit growing in you. Be filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand tonight. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate y'all being here. God, careful going home. Pray for Texas. Praise the Lord. We've got a lot of friends down there. The pastor has been flamed in the most all of them lost in their homes already. God is able to make something great come out of this. Amen. Some way, some happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless y'all. Appreciate you being here. Hope we'll see you soon. Have a great week.
sorry. Moose. Farrakhan. Farrakhan. You say you got it from a reliable source. I get, well, I got it from about three sources.